My dear friends, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK tutorial. And in today's episode, I want to talk to you about the wonderful and magic world of uh, word scripts. And those are uh, handy, so for sure, uh, to make uh, animated stuff like uh, automatic opening hangers, or missions, or uh, something like uh, this uh, little card that is approaching here, and that is moving along waypoints. Yes, sir, that is not moving along a path like in the tractor tutorial, but is moving along a predefined waypoint path. And here it is, and uh, let's see how we can uh, do this in Blender, in the, in the simulator. Okay, so because we want something uh, uh, custom for our uh, moving object, uh, we need to download something or create something in uh, Blender, or you can use one of the stock models of the sim, with this method you can use every model you want. And I choose this uh, really nice uh, card. So I'm gonna download it. Thank you, as Brainman. Download as a GLTS and save it, uh, and let's import this in Blender so I can show you how to transform this model into something usable for Fly Microsoft Fly Simulator. So I'm starting in Blender with a blank scene. I'm gonna delete everything here, and I'm gonna import the GTLS that I have uh, uh, downloaded, remaster airport car, and unzipped. I'm gonna choose the GLTF file, and here it is the model. So, uh, model coming from a Sketchfab are usually composed of uh, several uh, empties. Uh, those rights here are, are all messed up. So, what I'm, I'm doing, uh, I'm gonna join everything into a single mesh. And this mesh is object 15. Let's see where it is connected. Here it is. I'm gonna put the object in the collection and I, then I need to clear the parent of this one, so Alt P and clear the parent. Object is messed up, no problem. I'm gonna delete everything else that is not needed. So I have a single mesh. Rotate minus 90 degree, I rotate 180, okay, and apply all transform. And uh, let's see if the measurements are correct. Yes, they are, it's three meters, it's okay. Uh, let's see if it comes with texture. Yeah, it came with texture, and uh, now I'm gonna uh, select everything in uh, edit mode, vertex mode, and I'm going to uh, merge by distance. So every duplicated vertices is removed, and uh, I'm gonna do also uh, a cleanup. So mesh cleanup, delete loose, and mesh cleanup degenerate this soft. So the geometry of this uh, baby is um, is pretty okay. And we can uh, go on. Let's see uh, the materials. We have a lot of materials, and they come from the texture here that is, are coming up with the, with this model. Uh, we have very light textures, uh, so I'm gonna um, uh, I'm gonna say that I want uh, standard materials, flexible standard materials. All those material types, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is material one. So it's texture. I'm gonna choose material one. Those are my textures. Material one into material one. Material zero. Maybe this into material zero. This one, and we can move on. Okay, it looks like we have connected all the materials. Now I want to. Uh, we have a single mesh. I want to separate uh, all uh, the um, the wheels. So I'm gonna go in edit mode, press L on the wheel and on its uh, on all the parts. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure that they have selected all the wheel with G. I move this one with G. I move and see 
that is disconnected from everything else and I'm gonna click P and separate the selection as well as all the others L L L L L L pressing L everywhere now that one okay so now I have uh, the the body and the wheels separated and I want them to be separated because we want to animate those um, those wheels and they need to have a specific names so this is gonna be uh, here and uh, this is gonna be we are rear uh, left this is gonna be we are rear right wheel rear right this is gonna be wheel front right Ah, the latest and it's gonna be wheel front left so uh, I have uh, already applied all transforms now I need to set the center points of uh, each uh, wheel uh, mesh to the center point of the wheel so maybe uh, like this yeah, I'm gonna press Shift S, cursor to select it. In object mode, right click, set a region to 3D cursor. So the uh, orange dot is uh, right in the center of the wheel. And if I rotate uh, the wheel along the X axis, the X axis, you can see that the wheel is spinning in the right way. So let's do the same. Uh, Okay, splendid. Uh, we can maybe save this one. So file save as uh, where it was. You know, the master airport cart, and I'm gonna call this airport cart. So we don't lose any progress that we have already made. So let's uh, animate those wheels. And animations is really simple. You go to the animation. I like to have to see my texture. Uh, I don't know what this is, but we can remove that. And dove sheet action editor, and I'm gonna insert a new keyframe. So I press I on the keyboard, I and it's gonna be a rotation keyframe. And I'm gonna go to the frame 100, and I'm gonna rotate this one along the x axis by 360 degrees, and Let's undo this because I want my rotation to be XYZ Euler. XYZ Euler, please. XYZ Euler. And XYZ Euler. So in I to insert a rotation keyframe, go to frame 100. And R360. Uh, uh, 359 degrees. 359 degrees and I again to insert a rotation keyframe we make sure that we have a, a linear interpolation between between the two keyframes so let's play the animation and uh, is going in the right direction it's okay so the animation it must have a specific name and is wheel rotation and because this uh, animation is the same for all the wheels we can make it a fake user and uh, push down on the NLA select another wheel select our wheel rotation and push down push down wheel rotation and push down so if we play the animation all wheels now are rotating in the right direction perfect so maybe this is gonna be 100 frame long uh, we need that to make another animation for our wheels. So let's uh, mm, let's give the the right uh, NLA track name to our uh, animation. So we'll uh, uh, it is rotation I can mute the animation and now I'm gonna rotate uh, our wheel on the Z axis 
And as you can see, I made a, a big mistake here because the center of the wheel must be in another position and is not this one, is not this one, but maybe I need to set the origin to the center of mass. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if the rotation is still okay and it doesn't make some wonky stuff. Yeah, it was still good. Now, origin to the center of mass is okay. Perfect. Let's mute them. And now I can rotate this in the Z direction. Okay. And the first, let's go to the action editor. And I'm going, going to rotate this uh, by maybe minus uh, 30 degrees. It's okay. Frame zero. Insert a rotation keyframe. And then I'm going to go to the frame uh, 50. And um, on frame 50, maybe on frame 20, on frame, uh, yeah, on frame 20, on frame 20, I'm going to go to Altar to reset the rotation and insert a rotation keyframe again. And on frame 40, I'm going to rotate in the other direction, so R minus uh, R to 30. Yeah, R30, and insert a rotation keyframe. Okay, uh, we want always a linear interpolation, and this animation is going to be wheel orientation. Fake user, push down, and the same for this baby, wheel orientation, push down, and no linear animation. This is wheel orientation. And wheel orientation. Okay. Perfect. And when making this kind of object, I'd like to have uh, uh, an empty uh, at the center of the scene that is connected to the whole vehicle. So let's um, shift this and put the cursor to the word origin and add an empty. And let's call this empty airport cart. And I want to parent the body to the empty, so I'm going to select the body, control click on the empty, and control P and parent to objects. So when I move the empty, the body goes with the um, empty. And I want to parent uh, the wheels to their parent, which is the body. So I'm going to select all of them, control P on the body. Uh, control click on the body and control P parent to objects. So when I'm moving the body, the wheels are moving with the M, and when I'm moving the uh, empty, uh, all the vehicle is moving along. Okay, we are nearly done uh, with the object, and uh, we want to add uh, another point, and uh, this is the point where the pilot is gonna sit. And uh, let's uh, make it sit uh, like here and add an empty plane axis so because i have already <laughs> made this uh, this video all, all this video for you uh, i know that uh, the the pilot is uh, is in a different position so i'm going to slide this uh, like uh, here maybe like here uh, but you can see when you're doing your vehicle, um, put it in the simulator, you're going to see that the, the pilot, if the, the pilot is uh, misplaced, you can move uh, its point. And we just want to make sure that this node is called pilot zero, which is the captain. And uh, the, also this one must be in the collection. And it is, and uh, because the pilot is on the body, I'm going to parent the pilot to the body. So. Control click on the body, control P and parent to object. Okay, perfect.
And uh, before saving, we can maybe, before exporting, we need uh, a folder, a Simogic folder. This is going to be a Simogic folder for uh, this, um, this little cart. And uh, I'm going to create the needed folder in uh, to the wizard. So let's fire up the simulator. Okay, so I am in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is the lower loom in Idaho. And uh, I noticed that I want... Uh, my cart to go from uh, the the big city, the big village here to the airstrip because it's a it's a long road and I don't want to walk. So I want my cart here. Uh, then I can create a project and uh, let's go to the file new project uh, inside the test. Uh, I'm gonna say loon cart project. Uh, yeah, create new project. It's gonna be a package. Next, and this is gonna be a custom um, lower loon, and it's gonna be a scenery. Next, I want an asset here, a uh, lower loon uh, placement. I'm gonna press create, and well, this is very basic now. We need to add uh, an asset group for our sim object. So I'm going to click on the package, uh, open the inspector, add an asset group. It's going to be a custom next. And I want a sim object. And uh, the asset group name uh, is going to call uh, uh, Luna. It's 553, maybe the AKO. Uh, 553 uh, cart. I'm gonna press create and now I want to modify this. Go to the inspector. So this uh, in the in in the wizard there is airplanes, but we don't need airplanes. We need ground vehicles. So I'm gonna open this. Pack a certain sim objects. I need this to be ground vehicles. And the fee 53 card. This is the position of our sim object and also the output directory should be ground vehicles and enter to confirm. Okay, so now we need a place where to put our word script. So we're gonna click on the project the package on the inspector, add an asset group, it's going to be a custom one, next. And the type of the project will be word script, and I'm going to call this P553 uh, scripts. Enter and create. So let's see, yeah, here it is on the inspector. Uh, okay, uh, P53. Well, I, I like this to be a different location. So I'm going to move this up a level. And delete this. Okay, and the same goes for this one. And confirm. So the structure of uh, our project is correct. I'm going to save it and uh, let's go to Windows and continue with uh, the project. So this is the full uh, project structure of our uh, project, uh, the main project file. Inside the package sources, we have a folder called scenery and inside we have 553 scripts, so ICAO scripts. Uh, we have a scenery lower loom placement folder where our um, XML placement will be placed. And we have uh, our sim object folder, ground vehicles, 553 cards. So inside this folder, we're going to need two folders. One is called model and the other is going to be texture. And uh, we can copy inside the model folder our um, cart our cart model and export it there and grab all of this 
Yeah. Loom cart, pack a surface, seam on the ground vehicles, cart, and move it over. Okay, great. Now we can open the project in Blender and export uh, the cart inside this uh, folder here file. Where is that? Open. Document test, loom cart, package sources, uh, sim object, ground vehicles, 53 cart, model, and here it is. Okay, we have our texture, we open our uh, multi exporter. Uh, let's call the collection uh, airport uh, cart. Maybe let's give this a name 53 airport cart. Okay, press reload you know, this. And I want uh, this uh, to be group by collection. So the name is five uh, C53 airport card. Generate the XML. Let's look at the settings. Texture dot auto slash texture. Apply modifier. All the rest is correct. Uh, punctual likes whenever we use them. And then I'm gonna select my export folder. It's gonna be the model one. I'm gonna press accept and export. So textures are correctly exported in their uh, folder, and then we can close Blender. Yes, save, and continue again. So uh, it's a sim object, and uh, we need inside uh, its main uh, folder a uh, sim.cfg file. So I'm gonna grab my sim.cfg. They have uh, already compiled for my sample that you have seen in the beginning of the video. I'm going to put this into the main SIM object folder and let's see what's inside this one. So we have uh, uh, the usual um, versioning and uh, the title of our uh, SIM object that is going to be 5. 53 cart and please remember that uh, all the SIM objects are identified with this title name and they are not identified by uh, UID but with the title name here. Uh, we have the category which is going to be a ground vehicle. We have a pilot section and that describes what kind of pilot uh, we will have in our uh, sim object and where to attack, where to put the pilot and it's going to be that uh, pilot zero node we have uh, that we have inserted into Blender. Uh, we have uh, some uh, waypoint um, uh, behavior. So how this sim object will behave when it reaches a waypoint is gonna slow down. In this case, uh, uh, in uh, five meters, and uh, this is the distance from the center of the model to the wheels. And we have uh, the contact points. Uh, really, the only uh, well. This should be this should be important, but there is another another thing that is more important that is gonna go in uh, the model XML. And then we have uh, some design specification. Uh, max speed uh, is uh, is not important in this case, uh, but those acceleration constants are important for the behavior between the waypoints and uh, and the turning. Constant two. So the acceleration constants are uh, divided into into values, acceleration and deceleration. Uh, the first value is um, the higher, the more effective, and uh, the second value is the max g acceleration for uh, acceleration and deceleration. So this is uh, plus g, and this is uh, positive g's, and this is my negative g's, and we have the turning constants. Okay, so the turning constants, I open up the documentation and uh, they say that the first value is uh, how effective is this, the this turning, the second value is the maximum uh, uh, degree the, the card can turn, so this is 90 degree, and then we have uh, the optimal speed for turning and the fastest, the, the maximum speed for turning and it's going to be in knots, uh, speed in knots. 
Now we need to make some uh, modification to our model and to the XML of the model because right now is uh, it doesn't have animation. Uh, we can grab those uh, animation from the the Azobo uh, the Azobo vehicles or from this one that I have already made. Okay, so we're gonna open the uh, airport card XML, and here it is. So we're gonna we need the two lines for the animation: one for the wheel rotation, and one and uh, the other one for the wheel rotation. And of course, we're gonna need a fresh UID. So generate a UID. Then we can include in the behaviors uh, the ground vehicles behaviors and those ground vehicle behaviors um, take into account how to uh, how the wheels are um, how to move uh, the wheels and uh, we have our wheel rotation so the rolling of the wheels and this is important we have the radius the radius of the wheels. <laughs> In meters from the center of the wheel to the out to the outer part of the tire, and this is gonna tell the the engine how fast it should um, roll the wheel based on the speed of uh, the of the vehicle. And the other template we are using is the wheel orientation, and this is explained. Uh, so. We have one because in first frame of animation we have there we have the wheels torn in the left direction, and this is the speed on how the wheels are turning from left to right. Then uh, I have the I have the lights, but those lights uh, I don't know why don't don't work or how should they <laughs> they should work. And uh, this is correct like this. Okay, so the sim object is um, is working good. Uh, we we can also add uh, some sound if we want to this uh, sim object and uh, to have sound uh, please remember that you need to have uh, those um, the sound and the sound AI declaration in your flight sim and uh, I have made a sound for this uh, cart. Okay, and in this main folder we need a sound AI folder. So in the sound AI folder, uh, this is a pure FSX uh, or P3D style coding, and um, we have the name of our file. Uh, we have a combustion uh, section. We have those parameters that are the, the, the pitch depending on the on the on the power on the on the RPM of the engine and the, those are the volumes depending on the RPM of the engine. And you need to stay very low with the um, with the volume because uh, otherwise it's gonna it's gonna scream a lot in the simulator. And um, you're gonna need a uh, um, WAV files WAV file and uh, the specification of the WAV file are uh, 16. Um, 16-bit PCM wave file signed. Uh, well, this is not important. This is uh, if you wanted to have uh, sound, you can have in this way. The sim object is correct. Okay, so now it's start the fun part. Uh, you are here for this reason. We need to make the script, and uh, the main part of the script is composed of the waypoints that uh, the vehicle should uh, follow. And uh, to make those uh, waypoints, we're going to alert uh, because uh, it's uh, really easy to use. And I'm gonna add a new path. And uh, let's click to add the first point. And I'm gonna add clicking. Uh, I'm gonna add uh, more points. And now when we are done, we can make uh, 
a 180, 180 degree turn and uh, come back uh, on the same road. Okay. Now we can save uh, the spats. So right click and uh, save as. You can save this uh, um, everywhere. It's not important. I want to save this as a KML. And I'm going to call this uh, 553 cart uh, part. Well done. So we can close Google Earth. We can later come uh, to the script if you are to the path, if you are not uh, satisfied. Now we should start the, the very difficult part. Uh, this is because uh, the, the script, we don't have, uh, um, as you may know, a script editor in uh, Microsoft Live Simulator. Uh, they have removed it uh, in uh, sim update. I don't know what, uh, and then I don't know why. I hope uh, the script editor will come back again. But in the meantime, we need to find a way to write our script. And that way is with the notepad, because there is no way, no other way. So this is <laughs> how, is, uh, how is the code of uh, this, uh, those waypoint scripts. And we have an um, initial section uh, where we have uh, the sim object name. This is this one. This is the sim object name with some UID. Then uh, we have uh, the position of uh, this uh, sim object uh, um, from uh, the, the the place where the word script is uh, placed in the game, and from the, the center of the position of the word script. Then we have uh, some uh, parameters uh, regarding the speed uh, of the word script of the of our object between the waypoints. Then we have some other parameters. Then we have the whole list of uh, the uh, waypoints, each one with some UID. And uh, as you may imagine, writing that uh, manually, and I did this manually, and well, writing that manually is, is a process that takes so much time. No one wants to do that. And that's the reason you are not seeing so much of the scripts in the game, maybe. But I have created um, a little application to help you that takes the KML file and that writes the script for you. So, ta-da! Here is the application, the MAMU toolbox. You can click on Waypoint Script, then load the path, and it's gonna be 553 card path. And those are all the waypoints that we have inserted. Now we need to put in some data and uh, we need the name of the sim object from the sim.cfg. So it is uh, uh, sim object. This one. Okay. Uh, the speed of the cart it, it is in knots, so maybe 20, 10 knots or maybe 15 knots and the turn speed maybe 10 knots and the turn time that's the time that takes the object in second to make a turn uh, so maybe one is correct the type of the object you can have several ones this is a ground vehicle um, you can make the object stop when the user so your plane is in front of the cart uh, I'm gonna use force because this is, tends uh, mm, this can make your object stopping it too much. Uh, can reverse, yeah, why not? And you can choose to add a pilot, yeah, we want one, and the name of the file, and the name of well, it left it in Italian. In Italian. Uh, the name of this file, and I want to call this 553 cart script. And now I'm going to create, click on create script. And this is going to create an XML file that we need to save into the package sources scenery. Uh, C53 script. 
save and now we can take a look at the, the XML the app has generated and it's here yeah the container is our sim object we have our pilot and all the waypoints and those are 40 waypoints a lot to write them manually thank you mamu okay now we can uh, load the, the simulator and uh, see if uh, all the work we have done was worth so when i'm doing uh, all the scenery i usually start the fs package tool and try a compilation before going to the simulator so i can save maybe five minutes of my life yeah and we have errors so he's not finding a model.cfg and yeah he is right i have forgot i have forgot it because sim object needs a model.cfg that goes into the model folder and by the way we don't need those anymore because this uh, those are from the original file and paste here and inside the model.cfg we need to put the name of the xml here so the compiler knows what it should compile okay everything is correct uh, wonderful so we can uh, load the simulator and now we can place the script in the game so we are back in the game let's load up our project and now we need to place the script so we go into the placement loading editor we have the scenery editor here uh so we start a script uh, here objects word script uh 53 yes there is it is here and add it and the cart immediately starts to follow the path This crazy great is missing the pilot and I don't know why uh, so I need to investigate yeah there is the sound if you want to know the the path of the of your sim object you can go to the back sim object and round vehicle the back AI path make you see um, the path of your seam object you can also use sphere and the sphere makes a yellow path around your object a yellow sphere around your object and now is doing his stuff and going forth and back and that is following terrain and uh, well <laughs> you know Without the, the making of the sim object itself, so if you are using uh, one of the the Azobo sim objects, uh, it's a very, very, very fast project. So, uh, it's a very, very, very fast process. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy all of this. And let's, uh, I, I want to see why there is a, the, the, the pilot here. Okay, so because I want to show you that uh, the pilot works in the cart in every other place uh, other than that 553, and I don't know why, and Azobo will know this. I load up the sim in uh, this uh, wonderful cozy place, and this is uh, from uh, Parallel 42, kindly from uh, my friend Kevin. So let's see if we open our uh, project and place the cart. Okay, let's uh, load in editor our scenery and now let's do view objects and uh, let's search for the word script power loon and let's place our cart and yeah 
the pilot is there. And as you can see, because uh, really the, the script uh, is targeting some waypoints based on coordinates and uh, the cart is gonna search for that coordinate, it's gonna go through the first point of the coordinate and then it will follow the script. Uh, so I swear you, this baby is gonna cross the mountains to try to reach his uh, waypoint destination. And uh, there are uh, some other way of uh, doing uh, waypoints other than uh, uh, using uh, waypoints. Uh, you can use uh, um, relative points, relative uh, distances. Look, look at him. <laughs> you can use a uh, relative distance from the center of the script. And uh, maybe I sh I, I'm going to update uh, my app to help you uh, doing this sort of stuff. And uh, well, I hope you like uh, the the video. Uh, let's experiment uh, with the uh, with the word script, you can use it for uh, for pretty much everything, and uh, you can use them for um, for animals. You can use them for ships. You can use them for humans, for birds. Uh, everything is can, you can move. You can um, do animation with word script. Hope you enjoy, and, and see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>